Hi everyone, my name is Ted Wood and I am going to show you today two spreadsheets that are designed to give you as much information to help you with your real estate investing as possible with you giving it as little information as possible and so that you can understand both from a rehab perspective and from a rental analysis perspective. We're going to start with what I call the rehabber's quick bid. If you'll notice a lot of different colors here, the yellow, anything highlighted in yellow on either of these two sheets is where you can and should, in some cases, enter data. The uh, other fields should be left alone because you're going to be stepping on a formula if you try to enter data there. Stick with entering data in the yellow areas. Okay, let's suppose that we have a property that will be worth $162,000 once we have finished our rehab. All right, there's several rules that are used by uh, rehabbers to figure what their investment should be, what is their maximum allowable investment, what's their maximum allowable offer. One is called the 70% rule, the 75% rule, and there's the 80% rule. 80% rule is generally used on the East Coast. All of these rules are you, you multiply your ARV by 70%, 75%, or 80%, and this will give you your profit here. You're going to have, as a, as a rehabber, 15% in cost, as a general rule, somewhere around 6% for a real estate agent, 4% in closing costs, and 5% for the cost of money to pay taxes, insurance, and for the money that you're going to have to borrow to do the job, okay? This is your maximum allowable investment at the 70% rule, the 75 and the 80% rule. But we're going to have rehab expenses and they're going to be based on the square foot of the property. So if you know that it's 1500 you knew the you knew the after repair value, you knew the square feet, the square feet $10 a square foot is what you would generally call, charge for a rental unit. $20 typical that's what's called the lipstick and shoes rehab. That includes all new paint, all new carpet at least a thousand dollars in curb appeal, all new lighting, all new outlets, um, outlets and lighting. Uh, probably put in granite granite countertop in the kitchen. Put in a couple of new toilets. Fix everything up. Make it look spiffy. Okay, that's generally twenty dollars a square foot. Fifteen hundred square foot going to cost you about thirty thousand. If you're doing it just as a rental unit, you don't need to put new carpet in. If it's if the carpet is clean, it, you keep it. In a, in a rehab, the whole idea is you want it to look new and smell new. So uh, people buy the smell, believe me. Okay, so if, if you're, doing, you're working as a wholesaler, notice that let's just take the $20 rehab 70% rule. That's $83,400. But if you as a wholesaler want to make $10,000 for finding this killer deal for somebody, okay, then... It's gonna be your your bid is gonna to have to be seventy three thousand four hundred, so that you've got the ten thousand in your sell in there for yourself, and you can sell it to your buyer for eighty three four, or if they're using the seventy five percent rule eighty one five or eighty percent rule eighty nine six. Please realize this doesn't give you much money. The people that use the eighty percent rule generally have their own real estate agent on board, and they're not paying much for their money. Okay, that's how they're able to do that and be competitive. And they also know how to get their contractors to work at a lower price. Okay, I've had students tell me, oh no, in my area it's $24 a square foot for a lipstick rehab. So let's say it's $24 a square foot. All right, so you can use $24. You're, you're, as a buyer, you want to make $30,000, let's say. All right. Let's say that it's going to cost you $30,000 to do the rehab. It's 1,500 square feet. Then you can look at, well, what would you be able to bid? Your offer is going to be 67700 to make this work. But if you don't have any holding costs, in other words, you have your own money, 
you could maybe offer as much as seventy-eight thousand eight hundred. All right, uh, your no no cost of sale seventy-seven thousand two hundred forty. In other words, you're an agent. You don't have any of those costs. You could bid as high as eighty-five thousand five hundred. If you took out the wholesaler profit and you were just doing this yourself, these are the numbers that you could use. All right, but as a wholesaler you got to put your money in there, all right, so that you're, you're going to be able to make it and you know where your bids have to be. All right, that explains the rehabbing sheet. I also want to go over with you the rental analysis sheet. Rental analysis, let's say we're going to purchase this property at $80,000, all right, and it's going to cost us $20,000 in repair costs to bring it up to speed as a good rental unit. Uh, percent down, let's say we're going to put 20% down All right, as a uh, investor. The annual rents on this, and we know that we're making $1,350 a month, okay, but we want annual rents, so we'll go times 12, enter, we're going to have $16,200 in rents. Our taxes are $1,250. You should be able to get that from an agent if you're buying from an agent, from the buyer if you're working directly with the buyer, or if you have software or have access to the county records and such, you can find out what those, those are. It should be public knowledge, public record. Okay, Insurance, let's figure, is about $650 a year. All right. Now, we got three different sets of costs to put in here. Over here, all these utilities and all this, you only use those if you're vacant. You're expecting your tenant to pay that stuff. But you can use numbers over here. Suppose you're going to pay 9% in management fees, 5% maintenance costs, and 5% vacancy allowance. These are very... Uh, robust numbers. These are for pros, for people who, you know, know how to play this game and have done it for quite a while. It, because uh, your vacancy allowance might be seven, your management might be ten, it might be higher, even higher for your maintenance if you don't know how to take care of things or you bring in tenants who ruin stuff. All right. Okay. So th those are the numbers. L but what the bankers and the investors that would lend you the money to do this deal all want to know is well, what's your net operating income. Okay, there it is. What's your cap rate? On a $100,000 property, to have a cap rate of 11.29% says to me or to your investor that you're bringing in $11,290 in net income for every for the hundred thousand, that's quite a nice return. So invest a hundred thousand dollars in real estate. Hey, they don't call it real for nothing. Real estate's good investment. All right, but you only put twenty thousand dollars down to buy this deal. You do have your mortgage costs down here. So we're going to calculate what is my mortgage cost? How much money am I putting down? My return on my cash investment is thirty point seven one. Now, what is my debt service coverage ratio? What that means is how much money do I have in net operating income for every dollar I have to pay in mortgage? You can actually see that. 11, it's almost a little bit more than twice as much here as it is here. That's what the banks want to know. How much do you have in net operating income? How many dollars in net operating income for every dollar? in mortgage. Here it says that you have $2.19 for every dollar that you have to pay in mortgage. Banks want you to have at least a dollar and 25 cents, some more, but at $2.19 they're pretty happy with a number like that. But let's look at this thing. Suppose we did this rehab. We invested this $100,000 in this particular property or we got someone to invest it and let us do all the heavy lifting finding the deal, fi fixing it up, 
finding a renter, putting a property manager in place, either our, ourselves or someone else. And by the way, that's a critical, critical, critical thing. We're given 9% here to manage the property. Uh, I'm okay to pay 10% on, uh, and even more in some cases, uh, like uh, if you're in uh, vacation areas, you're going to pay more. But I don't like where you see these people that say that their property managers say, oh, I only charge 6%, da 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 da, da and uh, give me half or three quarters or all of the first month's rent. Well, think about it. Think about the incentives here. Follow the money. Their incentive for them is not to get you a good tenant, but to churn your tenant so they can get the big first month's rent constantly over and over again. All right, You don't want that. Don't pay anything for that. Pay them to manage the property and get you a tenant in place. You don't have a tenant, you get no 9%. <laughs> you got a tenant, you get 9%. You don't have to do any more lifting. All right. Because its, it's annual rents are 16200 all right, it's, that tells me that if we use the 1% rule, this property could have a value of $162,000, all right? Suppose we figure it's $162,000. We'll get rid of the repairs there because they, they were we paid the 100000 to fix it. Now we're looking at it. You see, if we go when we first buy it, 80000 is all they're going to lend us. The, 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 they're going to lend us the lower of the value or what we bought it for. Since we bought it for eighty, they won't even lend us the money to do the rehab. Okay. But we've got, we invested that money either out of our pocket or we found someone who had the cash, uh, cash buyer's list, whatever. All right, so it's now worth 162000 Well, what if we went to the bank and the bank was willing to lend us 20% of that or $129,600 is the loan amount. Since we spent a hundred, they give us 129600 dollars because now that it's a rehab, they're lending us based on the value of the property, which is 162,000. Now, they lend us 100. They give us the loan amount of 129,600 dollars. We got 29, almost 30 thousand dollars more than what we paid to fix it up. Uh, there's a lot of people be interested in you finding deals like that to help them out, and you could easily share that 50/50 with them for doing the work. Um, so you could make 15 grand doing a deal like this very, very easily. And uh, let's look at what it does to our numbers, though. Uh, we still got the 11,000 in, in uh, net operating income, but our cap rate goes down to 6.97 percent because we're working with 162 instead of 100. The cash on cash return, while it says 9.09. .09, it's really infinite because we we brought we took money out we didn't put money in you know we we're we're making money, but our debt service coverage ratio is a dollar thirty five we have a dollar and thirty five cents for every dollar that we can, uh, you know that we have to pay the bank over here in mortgage. All right. The good news about this sort of thing is while it doesn't bring back the robust return, you took cash out in the beginning. You've got a property that's positive cash flow. And let's take just, I'll just take an average rental that I have that I bought in, uh, oh, about, uh, let's see, 10 years ago. All right. I was getting $850 a month rent at that time. I am now getting $1,200 a month rent. Do the math. And uh, so you, your rents will appreciate over time. So if it's making money now, it'll make more money later. Not only that, the really smart investors, the ones that don't mind putting a little money out and don't have to have usurious returns immediately, they recognize if you buy nice rental units in nice areas, not only do you get more rent, but the property itself appreciates in value over time. That's where the big money is. I appreciate having you here to go over this and would love to get feedback from you as to whether or not this is helpful to you and how I can make it more helpful. God bless. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.